Good afternoon, students. Today's clinical pharmacology lecture is about drug interactions. The aim of the use of any drug is its purposeful interaction with the patient's body. So what does it mean drug interaction? Because the drug should interact. But besides this, besides interaction with patient's body, any drug, especially after oral administration, can interact with active substances that enter the body with food and drinks. Further, extremely rarely treatment involves the use of a single drug. As a rule, two, three, four, or more drugs are prescribed. In this regard, individual drugs can interact with each other and the expected therapeutic effects often change. Without understanding and taking into account the possible interactions of drugs with each other as well as with food, alcoholic beverages, tobacco smoke, it is impossible to use a rational pharmacotherapy for the successful treatment of patients. I would like to begin my lecture by quoting a few lines from a book written by an Australian physician, Norman Swan. Time after time, elderly people were admitted to the hospital in a terribly serious condition. A few days later, these people left it on their own, completely healthy. During their stay, only one thing happened. They had all their medications taken off and only those deemed absolutely necessary were re-prescribed. These people were poisoned by the combined action and interaction of four, six or even nine drugs that they took. The main reasons for prescribing combined pharmacotherapy are insufficient effectiveness of drug therapy when using a single drug. It's clear. Second, the patient has multiple diseases. That is why we should use combined pharmacotherapy and self-treatment. Self-treatment is treatment by the patient himself. A patient is not able to use combinations correct. <coughs> combinations of drugs. We should understand that currently, most often, we cannot do without combined pharmacotherapy. So we distinguish combinations rational, irrational and potentially dangerous combinations. Potentially dangerous combinations. Rational drug combinations or increase efficiency of treatment or improve safety safety examples please combination salbutamol with aminophilin in bronchial asthma attack if salbutamol use is not sufficient we add aminophilin 
and this combination leads to an increased bronchodilator effect. Of course, we use such combination. This is increase of efficacy. Combination NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, with omeprazole. When we use administer NSAIDs for a long time, they provoke development of gastritis, ulcer of the stomach, because of inhibition of synthesis of prostaglandins. Combination of NSAIDs with omeprazole, which decreases secretion of hydrochloric acid belonging to the group of proton pump inhibitor, this combination reduces risk of stomach ulcers. Stomach ulcers. <coughs> Irrational drug combination. Example. Inhibitors of angiotensin converted enzyme, AC inhibitors. While using together with acetyl salicylic acid or other NSAIDs, cause decrease hypertensive effect in hypertensive patients. So this combination is negative. Or increase the frequency of hospitalizations for decompensation in patients with chronic heart failure. This combination decreases activity of ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors. <clears throat> Statistical data. Potentially dangerous drug combinations Of all the combinations prescribed, about 25% are potentially dangerous. 25%. These are combinations used by physicians, doctors. 25%. And among all potentially dangerous combinations, among these 25%, 8% develop ADRs or adverse drug reactions, adverse drug reactions. In the world, 80,000 patients die due to adverse drug reactions every year. Every 80,000 patients. So this problem is very serious. <coughs> By the mechanism of drug interaction, we distinguish, first of all, pharmaceutical interaction or in incompatibility and pharmacological. Pharmaceutical means interaction before introduction into the body. It's interaction in a bottle while mixing the drugs, especially solutions. These are physical and chemical reactions between individual medicinal substances when they are mixed. So these are pharmaceutical reactions. Pharmacological interaction is interaction after introduction into the body, inside the body. But pharmacological includes pharmacokinetic interaction and pharmacodynamic. Pharmacokinetic during pharmacokinetic processes. This interaction leads to a change in the concentration of drugs near target cells. Near target cells. And because of this change or effect. Pharmacokinetic. Pharmacodynamic. Pharmacodynamic synonym is functional. Functional. At the level of target molecules leading to
to a change in the pharmacological effect. This is pharmacodynamic. <coughs> Pharmaceutical interaction or incompatibility. Examples. Examples. So, interaction of vitamin B12 or cyanocobalamin and ascorbic acid. When we mix these vitamins, B12 and C, so destruction of ascorbic acid by cobalt ions takes place. That is why we see nothing. We, we see nothing after mixing. But there is no effect, efficacy of this combination of this drug. Of course, it's necessary to know and not to use this mixture. Interaction of heparin and gentamicin. You know that heparin is direct anticoagulant, gentamicin is antibiotic from the group of aminoglycosides. So, when we mix these agents in solution, we see precipitation. Previous case, we saw nothing in mixing. In this case, we see precipitation, change in solution. Sometimes we see change of color, change of temperature. Of course, if we see something not normal, we mustn't use these combinations. <clears throat> Pharmacologic interaction, first pharmacokinetic. Pharmacokinetic interaction is interaction if drug substances change pharmacokinetic processes. Pharmacokinetic processes are absorption of drug, transport in the blood, distribution between organs, metabolism, biotransformation, and excretion. If the drug influences these processes, we call such kind of interaction pharmacokinetic. And <coughs> let us discuss this interaction. First of all, at the level of absorption, at the level of absorption, what can be in mixing of drug in, in interaction? Chelating or formation of chelates. This is direct chemical reaction. Chelates are not absorbed. That's why, of course, absorption of agent is inhibited, decreased. Change in the pH of gastric contents. Changes in gastrointestinal motility. Influence on P glycoprotein activity, this transport system. Damage to the intestinal mucosa and influence on normal intestinal microflora. Microflora. First of all, example of chelating. <coughs> if we at the same time, administer iron compounds for anemia and tetracyclines antibiotics. So, these agents interact in between with formation of non-absorbable chelates. That leads to malabsorption of both and iron and antibiotic. And antibiotic. Of course, absorption of both drugs is inhibited. That is why effect will be decreased. <coughs> Change of pH of gastric contents, of gastric juice. Gastric juice. <coughs> Common use of barbiturates of barbiturates and agents decreasing acidity of gastric juice. Barbiturates, you know, belong to 
hypnotic or anti-epileptic agents. If we administer together with barbiturates, for example, proton pump inhibitors, they decrease acidity, decrease acidity, and in decreased acidity of gastric juice, ionized barbiturates are produced, ionized. That causes inhibition of absorption of barbiturates. And malabsorption of barbiturates causes decrease of hypnotic and anti-epileptic action. Same in combination with H2 with H2 histamine receptor blockers of barbiturates. Because of influence of one or combined drug on acidity of gastric juice. Influence on gastrointestinal motility. Some drugs increase intestinal motility. These are laxatives, purgatives, antibiotic erythromycin. Some drugs decrease intestinal motility. For example, anticholinergics, opioid analgesics, some antipsychotics. If the drug, com one of combined drug, increases intestinal motility, it promotes weakened drug absorption, absorption of second drug in combination. On the contrary, if the, if the drug decreases intestinal motility, they promote strengthening of absorption and of effect. As for influence on gastric emptying, prokinetics, so-called prokinetics, for example, metoclopramide, domperidone, they accelerate gastric emptying. This also promote strengthening absorption of drugs and increase of effect. Increase of effect up to development of adverse drug reactions. Influence on peak glycoprotein. On peak glycoprotein. So, glycoprotein P or peak glycoprotein or second name, multi-drug resistance protein 1, MDR1. This is a membrane transport system. Membrane transport system in a number of cells. This transport system transports many substances such as lipids, steroids, peptides, bilirubin and a large number of drugs. In a number of cells, for example, in enterocytes of intestine, in epitheliocytes of the proximal renal tubules, in hepatocytes, in endotheliocytes or histohematic barriers. Histohematic barriers. So, influence on this transport system, of course, change transport of drugs. <coughs> we distinguish among the drugs glycoprotein P inhibitors and activators. Inhibitors of P glycoprotein include carvedilol, alpha beta adrenal blocker, amiodarone, antianginal antiarrhythmic, quinidine antiarrhythmic, verapamil, calcium channel blocker, spironolactone, diuretic, nicardipine, antianginal, propafenone, antiarrhythmic, atorvastatin, antilipidemic or hypolipidemic. Clarithromycin, erythromycin, antibiotics, aminoglycosides, sorry, uh, microlytes, ketoconazole, itraconazole, antifungal agents, cyclosporin, this is immunodepressing agent, fluoxetine, paroxetine, <coughs> antidepressants, 
pentazosin, this is analgesic. So these drugs are able to inhibit this protein. Inductors or activators of pig glycoprotein include morphine, St. John's wort, this is plant, drug plant, Latin name Hypericum perforatum, rifampicin, retinoids, dexamethasone. These drugs activate pig glycoprotein, activate. Example of interaction of digoxin and quinidine. A few minutes ago I told you that quinidine is one of inhibitors of pig glycoprotein. So, for example, we administer to the patient digoxin, cardiac glycoside digoxin. In combining with quinidine, Concentration of the joxin is increased because quinidine inhibits this transport system. That's why concentration in blood is increased. That's why can be developed digitalis intoxication. This is interaction on the level of transport systems, exactly pig like a protein. Clinical case about this. A 65 year old man suffering from frequent ventricular extrasystoles takes quinidine, prolonged form, 400 mg daily for two months. In connection with the development of functional diarrhea, the patient was prescribed loperamide which is anti-diarrheal agent, 8 mg per day. One day later, he complained of drowsiness, shortness of breath and dry mouth. Dry mouth. This is reason of interaction of quinidine and loperamide. Look. Quinidine Antirhythmic agent B is the inhibitor of P glycoprotein. Inhibition of this transport system, increasing the permeability of the brain blood barrier for loperamide. In normal situation, loperamide doesn't cross blood brain barrier. In interaction with quinidine, permeability is increased. So, loperamide penetrates into the CNS and causes morphine-like effects associated with opioid receptor stimulation. Stimulation. <coughs> Next, pharmacokinetic interaction at the level of drugs metabolism. Biotransformation, influence on biotransformation or metabolism of drug. First of all, first of all, the drugs are able to influence or to inhibit or to activate enzymes. Enzymes. One of the most important system in the enzymatic system is the system of cytochrome P450. 450. CYP, CYP is abbreviation for cytochrome P450, family enzymes. These enzymes catalyze the breakdown of various substances through hydroxylation, including a lot of drugs, a lot of drugs. So, we distinguish among drugs agents inducing, increasing activity of this enzyme and agents inhibiting. So, drug inductor increases activity of CYP that leads 
to decrease in drug concentration because of fast metabolism of another drug metabolized by these enzymes. That's why to reducing the effect. On the contrary, drugs inhibitors of CYP decrease activity of certain enzymes in this system. That leads to increase in drug concentration. That's why to increase the effects sometimes to ADR or adverse drug reactions development. development. <clears throat> One of the most potent enzymes in this system is CYP3A4. This enzyme localized in hepatocytes and enterocytes in intestine. And these enzymes participate in metabolism of almost 34% of known drugs. 34%. Including calcium antagonists, most benzodiazepines, most benzodiazepines, statins, cyclosporin, antihistamine drugs, antiallergic antihistamine, and odd. We also distinguish CYP3A4 inhibitors and CYP3A4 inductors. Two inhibitors following drugs belong antifungal ketoconazole, itraconazole, fluconazole, H2 histamine blocker decreasing gastric secretion, cymetidine, antibiotics, erythromycin, clarithromycin, grapefruit juice, it's not drug, but grapefruit juice also is inhibitor of CYP3A4. If they inhibit this enzyme, they cause increase of concentration of drugs metabolized by this cytochrome. On the contrary, inductors include carbamazepine, antiepileptic, antibiotic rifampicin, rifabutin, antiviral ritonavir, St. John's Wort, I told you. If the agents activate enzymes, so they promote fast metabolism of other drugs. That's why fast decrease of concentration and decrease of effects. Decrease of effects. Clinical case. <coughs> to explain this. A 39-year-old woman suffering from allergic rhinitis and vaginal candidiasis. She took the anti-allergic agent terfenadine, 60 mg per day, together with the antifungal drug ketoconazole, 200 mg per day. In two weeks of usage of this combination, she complained of intermittent episodes of loss of consciousness. Investigation ECG showed elongation of the QT interval up to 650 milliseconds and formation of specific arrhythmia towards at the point or pirouette type tachycardia. Pirouette type tachycardia. And during these periods, yes, a patient was unconscious. Unconscious. So, <clears throat> ketoconazole belongs to CYP3A4 inhibitors. It inhibits this enzyme. Inhibits this enzyme. But terfenadine is metabolized by this enzyme. That's why by transformation of terfenadine is delayed and concentration of terfenadine is increased. So you see 
this is concentration of terfenadine before using of combination single and this is concentration after usage of combination so increase of plasma concentration causes specific influence on heart elongation of QT interval and appearance of specific pirouette type tachycardia tachycardia <clears throat> let's discuss interaction of verapamil which is calcium channel blocker used as anti-anginal and antiarrhythmic verapamil with fluconazole and carbamazepine fluconazole is antifungal carbamazepine is anti-epileptic drug fluconazole is inhibitor of CYP3A4 carbamazepine on the contrary inductor of CYP3A4 when we use combination verapamil with fluconazole fluconazole inhibits enzyme that causes delay of verapamil biotransformation increased concentration and increase of effects that's why appearance of adverse reactions arterial hypertension bradycardia in usage of combination verapamil with carbamazepine carbamazepine is inductor so it's activate enzyme that's why activates biotransformation that's why concentration of verapamil is decreased that's why reduced effects no effects or weak effect of verapamil <clears throat> continue pharmacokinetic interaction at the level of distribution at the level of distribution This interaction is of clinical importance in cases where the drug has the following properties. Small apparent volume of distribution, less than 35, and high affinity to plasma proteins. So bound fraction of this drug is more than 90%. For those drugs, this is very important. Interaction in between drugs, for example, warfarin is indirect anticoagulant, very high affinity to plasma proteins, you see, and very low, very low apparent volume of distribution. Phenytoin, phenytoin is anti-epileptic. Tolbutamide, tolbutamide, sulfonylurea derivative used for second type diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus when we combine these drugs these drugs so we cause increase of concentration of the agent whose binding to proteins is less for example if we combine warfarin and phenytoin and phenytoin we use normal dose of phenytoin but cause increase of effects and intoxication because no places in proteins for phenytoin because warfarin has taken all places and no places for this and free fraction of drug is increased that's why activity pharmacological effect are increased so we will see increase of effect intoxication of course we should take into account this interaction <laughs> pharmacokinetic interaction at the level of excretion the level of excretion 
first of all, first of all, <coughs> they drugs can interact if they influence glomerular filtration in kidneys, tubular reabsorption in kidneys, and active secretion in kidneys and liver. And liver. These processes. <coughs> Example. Drugs whose tubular reabsorption is inhibited by changes in urine pH. In urine pH. In lowering of pH, in acidic, more acidic pH of urine, following, following drugs, following drugs, reabsorption is inhibited. Amphetamine, imipramine, codeine, morphine, procaine, quinine, chloroquine, cephaloridine. If reabsorption is inhibited, this promote fast excretion from the organism and decrease of concentration, decrease of activity. So if these drugs meet, if we use combinations between these drugs, one of these drugs, and agents increasing acidity, so of course activity of this drug is decreased. On the contrary, Amino acids, barbiturates, naledixic acid, nitrofurantein, salicylates, sulfonamides, phenylbutazone. Their reabsorption is inhibited. When increasing pH, when increasing pH, so <clears throat> this can be, the effect is decreased when we combine these drugs with alkaline compounds alkaline compounds activity will be decreased a few words about pharmacodynamic or functional interaction functional interaction its interaction on the level of target molecules of target molecules <clears throat> we distinguish possible strengthening the effect and weakening the effect. So pharmacodynamic interaction by the direction of changing the effect is divided by synergism or strengthening the effect and antagonism and antagonism. Synergism is increase of effect when we use two drugs or three drugs and their common total effect is more than effect of individual. And we distinguish three kinds of synergism. Additive synergism. If the total effect of the combination is greater than the effect of individual drugs, but less than the arithmetic sum of the effects. Second, summation. If the total effect of the combination is equal to the arithmetic sum of the effects of the individual components. Arithmetical sum. And potentiation, the strongest kind of synergism. If the overall effect of the combination is greater than the arithmetic sum of the effects of the individual substances, individual substances. These are kinds of synergism. And weakening the effect is antagonism. Antagonism. We distinguish also several kinds of antagonism. Of antagonism. <clears throat> First of all, can be direct and indirect interaction. Direct and indirect. Direct pharmacodynamic or functional interaction. If both drugs add, act on the same molecule by a substrate, same target 
or same receptor or same ion channel or enzyme, etc. If both drugs act on the same target molecule, so this interaction will be direct. Indirect, indirect, if both drugs act on the different molecular biosubstrates or target molecules. On different, direct, indirect. Examples of direct, direct interaction. Direct synergism. Direct synergism is used rarely, rarely. For example, it's combination of salbutamol with theophylline. Both drugs belong to bronchiolytics. Bronchiolytics. Salbutamol is agonist of beta-2 adrenaline receptors. Theophylline is inhibitor of phosphodiesterase. But interaction of these drugs leads to an increase of bronchodilator effect due to accumulation of CAMP. CAMP. This is synergism. Direct antagonism used more often. More often. For example, its use of dobutamine, which belongs to beta-1 agonist, with an overdose of beta blockers. Dobutamine with beta blockers. In overdose of beta blockers, we use dobutamine. Opposite action on beta adrenergic receptors. First agonist, second antagonist. Direct but antagonism. Direct but antagonism. Indirect interaction. Example of synergism. Combination of moclobemide and fluoxetine. Both belong to antidepressants. But by the mechanism of action, moclobemide belongs to MAO inhibitors. MAO inhibitors. And fluoxetine belongs to selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Different mechanisms, different mechanisms, different biomolecules, but both cause to accumulation of serotonin. And this combination can cause development of serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome. Development of adverse reactions. Indirect antagonism, for example, usage of calcium antagonist verapamil to eliminate tachycardia caused by beta-2 adrenergic agonist salbutamol. Salbutamol is broncholytic. Broncholytic, it stimulates beta-2 receptors, but in high dose, in high dose, it stimulates also beta-1 adrenergic receptors that causes development of tachycardia tachycardia we can use beta blockers but it will be direct antagonism but we can use calcium channel blocker verapamil beta 2 agonist stimulates receptors but verapamil blocks Calcium channels of cardiomyocytes that eliminates tachycardia. tachycardia. So this is indirect antagonism, pharmacodynamic. Interaction of drugs with food, medicinal plants, tobacco and alcohol and alcohol first of all we understand that oral administration of drugs 
of course causes meeting of the drugs with food. Different kind kinds of food, different amount of food, and some drugs, some drugs are better absorbed with food, sometimes because of increase of acidity. And these drugs, which are better absorbed, include amitriptyline, antidepressant, propranolol, beta blocker, hydralazine, antihypertensive, griseofulvin, antifungal, hydrochlorothiazide, diuretic, phenytoin, antiepileptic, carbamazepine, antiepileptic, ethyl acetate, indirect anticoagulant, diazepam, tranquilizer and antiepileptic, spironolactone, diuretic, furadonine, furazolidone, antibacterial agents, chloroquine, antimalarial, chloroquine. So these drugs are better absorbed with food. So with food, their concentration is increased. Worse absorbed with food, Acetyl salicylic acid, ampicillin, antibiotic, antipyrine, <coughs> non opioid analgesic, chloramphenicol, antibiotic, digoxin, cardiac glycoside, doxycycline, antibiotic, ibuprofen, <coughs> non opioid analgesic, and non steroidal anti inflammatory, isoniazide, anti-tubercular drug, canamycin, antibiotic, levodopa, anti-parkinsonic, lincomycin, antibiotic, metacycline, also antibiotic. So these drugs are worse absorbed with food, with food. Example, interaction of drugs with food, the level of absorption. If we use semi-synthetic penicillins and the patient takes, takes food which increase stomach acid, for example, tomatoes, coffee, they increase stomach acidity. In increased stomach acidity, destruction of semi-synthetic penicillins takes place. That's why absorption is inhibited, is inhibited. But a patient can take any food. Interaction of drugs with foods rich in calcium. We discussed with you interaction of <coughs> calcium drug calcium and uh, other drugs but now also foods rich in calcium these are milk foods cottage cheese milk yogurt kefir and in interaction interaction of tetracyclines fluoroquinolones also antibacterials with these foods, formation of non-absorbable comp complex compounds takes place. And the drug is not absorbed. Is not absorbed. That's why concentration in blood is decreased and no effect. Is no effect. Of course, no need to take these drugs together with such kinds of food. Grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice is a potent inhibitor of CYP3A4. We have discussed. That leads to an increase in the concentration of drug in the food. Inhibiting this enzyme, they delay metabolism of following drugs. Nifedipine by 100%, cyclosporine by 62, 
Maida Zalam by 52%. Size of right by 52. Triya Zalam by 42. Etc. Etc. That is why in taking of these drugs together with grapefruit, adverse reactions can be developed. Can be developed. Look, this is concentration of several drugs, including sildenafil also, sildenafil in blood, intaken with water and with grapefruit juice. This is concentration. If we take sildenafil with water, and this is concentration, if we take sildenafil with grapefruit juice. Of course, increased concentration causes stronger effect, vasodilation and decrease of arterial pressure. Decrease of arterial pressure. So, you see, grapefruit juice inhibits CYP3A4 that leads to delay or by transformation of sildenafil, increased plasma concentration and arterial hypotension hypotension it's clear it's necessary to take into account <clears throat> also pharmacodynamic dynamic interaction of drugs with food development of so-called cheese syndrome Cheese syndrome is increased blood pressure, tachycardia, cardiac arrhythmias, if the patient eats cheese. But not only cheese. Of course, in interaction of cheese, not only cheese, but some other kinds of foods with inhibitors of mouth. This is adrenergic sinus. This no ending, no ending, and this is postsynaptic membrane on effectory cell. On effectory cell, there are adrenoceptors. There are adrenoceptors. From sympathetic nerve ending, noradrenaline is released and stimulate. Adrenal receptors stimulate adrenal receptors in axoplasm of neuron of axon. There is enzyme MAO monoaminooxidase which oxidizes noradrenaline and inactivates and inactivates. After noradrenaline is released and after stimulation of receptors, it is reabsorbed. It is reabsorbed. <coughs> if you use moclobemide belonging to inhibitors of monoamino oxidase, moclobemide inhibiting MAO delays metabolism of norepinephrine, increases its concentration. And a patient eats cheese wine, beer, and some other foods rich in tyramine. tyramine. Tyramine acts like sympathomimetic, stimulates release of noradrenaline. But concentration of noradrenaline is increased because of influence of moclobemide. So this combination causes Increase of release of noradrenaline and stimulation of adrenal centers. That's why tachycardia, increased blood pressure, cardiac arrhythmias can be developed. We call it cheese syndrome. Cheese syndrome. Of course, no need to eat these kinds of foods being treated with moclobemide. <clears> 
interaction of drugs with medicinal plants at the level of metabolism. We have discussed a little and once again. St. John's word for hypericum perforatum. <coughs> we produce drugs, some drugs from this plant. So, raw material, <coughs> raw material and molecules from this plant are potent inductors of CYP3A4 that results in reduced concentration of the following drugs. Progestin components of oral contraceptives, progestins, decrease concentration. Cyclosporin concentration is decreased. Simvastatin, hyperlipidemic. Midazolam. Midazolam belongs to <coughs> trinquilizers, benzodiazepines. And interaction of these drugs with the preparations produced from St. John's wort cause reducing the effect of these agents, of these agents. It's necessary to take into account. <coughs> tobacco, interaction of the drugs with tobacco. Tobacco smoke. Tobacco smoke contains polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So in smoking, in smoking, these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons enter the organism with inspiration, with inspiration. And they cause induction of CYP1A2. But this enzyme participates metabolism of antipsychotics, haloperidol, clozapine, chlorprotexin, antidepressants, imipramine, clomipramine, teophylin, bronchiolytic, anxiolytics, diazepam, lorazepam, alprazolam. So these agents are metabolized with the help of this enzyme. Of this enzyme. Induction of this enzyme causes activation of metabolism, decrease of concentration, increase of concentration of metabolites, but decrease of concentration of these molecules. That is why decrease of activity. Decrease of activity. Of course, smoking is prohibited. Prohibited in usage of these drugs. It's pharmacokinetic interaction. Pharmacodynamic interaction. Of course, tobacco smoke includes nicotine. Nicotine, which is agonist of N cholinoceptors. N cholinoceptors. Stimulation by nicotine after smoking of N cholinoceptors causes activation of adrenaline release in adrenal medulla and activation of noradrenaline release from postganglionic sympathetic nerves. Both noradrenaline and adrenaline release is increased. That's why it decreases effect of antihypertensive drugs. Smoking together with usage of antihypertensive drugs is nonsense. Is nonsense. <clears throat> Pharmacokinetic interaction of drugs with alcohol, ethyl alcohol. Sometimes patients take alcoholic drinks. Ethyl alcohol is cleft in our body. First reaction to acetaldehyde by the influence of <coughs> ethyl alcohol uh, dehydrogenase, ethyl alcohol dehydrogenase. Second reaction, acetaldehyde is being transformed to acetic acid 
by the action of enzyme acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. We use specific inhibitor of this enzyme, disulfiram, for treatment of chronic alcoholism. Of chronic alcoholism. So we use, we give to these patients disulfiram. Disulfiram <coughs> inhibits this enzyme. That is why taking of alcoholic drink causes accumulation of acetaldehyde and development of so-called acetaldehyde syndrome. Fever, chills, shortness of breath, palpitations, weakness, fear. fear. But this is kind of treatment of chronic alcoholism. But some drugs also, also are able to inhibit this enzyme. And we call it disulfiram-like effect. Disulfiram-like effect. These drugs are metronidazole, antiprotozole and antibacterial, chloramphenicol antibiotic, forazolidone, antiprotozole, antibacterial, cephalosporins, antibiotic, clotrimazole, antifungal. So these drugs also inhibit acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And when taken together with ethyl alcohol, they will cause development of acetaldehyde syndrome. Of course, of course, such combination is prohibited. But principally, principally, it's prohibited to use ethyl alcohol, any alcoholic drink, in patients. In patients. This is pharmacokinetic interaction. <coughs> Pharmacokinetic interaction depending on dose of ethyl alcohol. So, sometimes, sometimes they use single, single, single time, one time ethyl alcohol, but in large dose. Single use in large doses causes inhibition of all cytochrome P450 isoenzymes. An inhibition of these enzymes increases concentration of different drugs, of different drugs. So, taking one acetyl alcohol in high doses promote increase of effects of different, different drugs. Long-term use in small doses causes induction of CYP2E1. If induction, so <coughs> metabolism of drugs is activated. Is activated. If metabolism is activated, so effects of those drugs metabolized by this enzyme is decreased. Is decreased. No effect. Once again, taking of ethyl alcohol, alcoholic drinks, is prohibited in any patients. Pharmacodynamic interaction of drugs with alcohol. With alcohol. So, in combination of ethyl alcohol with antipsychotics, tranquilizers, Opioid analgesics, antihistamines, all of these drugs inhibit central nervous system. So, in interaction with ethyl alcohol, inhibitory effect on CNS is increased up to respiratory arrest. Of course, prohibited to use ethyl alcohol together with Agents inhibiting CNS for the third time. Inpatient alcoholic drinks are prohibited. Full stop. One more pharmacodynamic interaction. In interaction of ethyl alcohol with clonidine, clonidine, clonidine belongs to central 
neurotropic antihypertensives very specific interaction very specific interaction causing CNS depression collapse amnesia and fatal outcome fatal outcome of course this combination is prohibited and very very dangerous very dangerous for the fourth time in patients in any patients alcoholic drinks are prohibited are prohibited <clears throat> risk factors for negative drug interactions negative drug interactions can be provoked by polypharmacy polypharmacy means simultaneous use of a large number of drugs in one patient usually more than five yes polypharmacy provokes development of negative interactions pharmacogenetics more precisely congenital anomalies of drug metabolizing enzymes of drug metabolizing enzymes presence of comorbidities exactly in comorbidities accompanied diseases we use polypharmacy old age in old patients also negative drug interaction we can meet more often and number five use of relatively toxic drugs use of relatively toxic drugs if we use toxic drug of course <coughs> we can cause we can provoke development of adverse drugs reactions thus knowledge of the main mechanisms and risk factors for the development of dangerous drug interactions as well as systematic notification of the medical community about clinically significant drug interactions can improve the effectiveness and safety of ongoing pharmacotherapy. Thank you for attention.